How's it going everybody? Will Robson here. You can check out my work at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc. So moving into the pencils now of this pinup, this is part four I believe of the series and this is a pinup for a comic called Lady Frostblood um, and I potentially might be doing a, uh, a project with this client so that's very exciting. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the way these pencils came out. Um, I was, <laughs> you can see here, uh, the hair is really bad to start with, so I sort of just leave the hair until the end. I just put in the hairline. I'm still, hair's, hair and um, hands are still sort of my Achilles heel in, in drawing, um, among a, a million other things, but uh, f for things that I have to draw constantly, they certainly are. Um, I think I make her head a bit too big here, so I shrink it up later. You'll see me fixing a lot of the heads in this pinup because... Um, I don't know. <laughs> the nice thing about uh, working digitally is that, you know, you can fix anything at any stage. And I think as I'm progressing as an artist, I'm sort of just noticing more of my flaws as I'm going. You'll see me constantly sort of change the size of things, move things around. And I think essentially that's just having a better eye for spotting my errors whilst drawing. So that's certainly uh, a good thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's kicking this dude in the face, and this guy is like, oh my god, this really hurts, as anybody would. There's no speech bubble that says that, but that's sort of the attitude I have. And she's sort of this cool, uh, I don't know, cool chick that can't be hurt by bullets. And she has like healing powers, essentially, so she can just sort of beat the crap out of you while she's being stabbed and shot and stuff like that. Um, and I believe that the first issue uh, of Lady Frostblood, while I'm doing this pinup, is, is going to be available on Comixology this week. So I'll definitely keep all of you posted on that so you can have a little read of it. And I believe that this piece is being used for the Kickstarter for the book. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But uh, exciting stuff going on with this. I, as I said, I potentially might be doing a project with this client, which I'm very much looking forward to, which means that I'll continually be drawing comics professionally for a living, uh, through the summer so that is very exciting for me it's always a bit scary when you don't know you don't have any projects lined up and you're a freelance artist because you know the way I pay my bills is through my art so if I don't have any projects lined up then I ain't gonna be able to eat so luckily I'm gonna be eating for the next couple of months which is great uh, and it is exciting I mean I've been freelancing uh, doing this full-time now since January and there's points where I've been through a couple of projects since then and, and some of them haven't been great and I've learned a lot so I sort of uh, have been figuring out what's the best way for me to work with clients so that I can pay my bills but also not work continuously because recently I've been drawing seven days a week 12 hours a day for the, since January and it takes a toll because I mean I have had no social life I haven't been able to hang out with anybody and I've just been drawing and there's, there's good there's good things and bad things to that but luckily the projects I'll be taking on starting in April uh, are a bit different they, they pay more than my uh, current projects and it means that I'll actually be able to have you know like a day off every week which is exciting and I, I won't have to uh, be stressed and, and that's important not so that I can sit down and do nothing but uh, it's so that I can spend time studying how to draw because there's obviously still so much I have to learn and the more you study the more I can apply it to my work anyway I should probably talk about what I'm doing so this guy in the foreground I really like his head but he looks a bit like Commissioner Gordon and these are supposed to be Russian mobsters but um, it doesn't matter and I'm very proud of drawing that gun by the way I uh, I didn't look at any reference for, uh, for that so I love when stuff like that comes together. I mean, you should always use reference for things you don't really understand, but luckily, when I was a kid, I used to play airsoft all the time, so I knew all of these guns since they were replicas. I used to draw guns all the time. I remember I got in trouble from school for drawing guns. They thought I was going to like shoot up my high school when I lived in the States, which is silly. And I was like, I had to tell them, no, I actually just like to draw comics, and I'm learning how to draw guns. So. Anyway, so... Uh, the client wanted me to draw Russian mobsters, so they sent me pictures of what they had in mind, and I saw a lot of track suits and mustaches and bald heads. Uh, so I sort of went for the sort of uh, I need, oh, I don't know how to describe it. Just yeah, lots of track suits and stuff like that. I was thinking like Grand Theft Auto 4, Nico Bellic type wear when you first start out in that game, even though he's not Russian, but still. Uh, and I think I nailed it, alright. Uh, 
this guy gets changed. If you look here, he's he's a bit too small. I mean, for the size that she is, he, he'd practically be the size of a child. So I didn't want it to look like a child was getting kicked in the face. Even though this child is bald with a moustache, I still, you know, I had to get the, the message across. Um, and I really sort of like the environment I made with this. I mean, there's going to be a lot of detail in the background. I get rid of the two guys that are below her feet because it just got a bit too cluttered. But I am very happy with the way this piece came out. Um, so here I'm drawing a guy getting kicked in the face and I'm much easier to draw. I flip the image upside down because it's much easier to draw an upshot of the face than draw a sort of downshot of a face from looking from above. Um, so I always try and rotate things. And I wanted blood splattering here and I really, I really don't know the sort of rhythm of drawing splattered blood yet. So I need to work on that. And that's the nice thing about working so much in comics recently, all these indie books. I mean, it's funny because I'll, 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 I'll find whilst working on a page like, oh, it turns out I don't know how to draw grass or uh, I don't know how to draw headstones. And then I do like a complete study. So the next time I have to draw that, it's not going to be as much of an issue. Because, I mean, I, I'm just getting annoyed that I still have a lot of guesswork in my work where I'll eventually come to something like that I don't know how to draw. Like trash filled alleys and buildings and stuff I've drawn recently in the past couple of months in every single project I've been doing. So, uh, and I have great reference. I got like, you know, all the spawns so I can easily just flip through that to find a trash filled alley. But it's hard to find the exact reference you want to use uh, and style that you want to draw certain things. So uh, things pop up, which is nice. So I got this guy here. I wanted to stick him in a suit. I wanted everyone to be wearing a different outfit. I didn't want them all to look, you know, all wearing track suits. And I wanted to give them all different hairstyles. So uh, they're obviously all individuals. Um, and you'll notice here that I made his belt way too high up in his body. I drew this figure actually different than I usually draw my figures. I sort of put like those floating 3D pants on him. And by pants, I mean the English way of saying pants is in underwear, as I believe the rest of the world says um so yeah and you'll see here a lot like some of these faces are really crap while i'm drawing them but just as i continuously draw them you'll see me flip the image so i can get a fresh look on what i'm drawing and that's a that's a trick that you can do traditionally if you just get a mirror and, and sort of put it next to your artwork you can sort of see it flipped and you you instantly notice all the mistakes you're making because i think one of the the things about becoming a better artist is you gotta, I know I've found this recently in my sequential work, you gotta, you, you know when something's bad in your artwork, and depending on a deadline, you might just go, oh, screw it, I've worked on this too much, I can't figure it out. But I've sort of uh, made myself recently go, no, you can't just say, this doesn't look good, I'm moving on. Recently I've just said, right, you don't know what you're doing here, so figure it out until it looks good. Or at least pretty passable. Because... You know, a, a little bit of bad art on, on anything can ruin a whole image, obviously. I mean, that's a given. Um, so there you saw pause because I just googled New York uh, doorways. Because I really want to get better at my architecture. So I found this really cool doorway. I found about three or four doorways and I combined all the elements I liked in those doorways. And I have those images saved in my iPhone so that when I'm working I have the reference right next to me so I don't have to keep digging for it. And you'll see, even though these are pencils, they're extremely loose because I'm working digitally. And since I'm the inker of everything I do, I treat this more as my roughs before I move into my inks, which are really, since I can erase them, uh, I can change them onto stuff. So yeah, that guy had an eye patch for a second. Uh, and this is the type of stuff I love to do, is the randoms, where I don't have to draw anybody specifically. They're just background characters. You can draw bigger noses, bigger chins, you know. You can draw, I mean, it's much more fun to draw an ugly person than it is to draw a pretty person, because drawing pretty people is hard, because they have to be symmetrical. That's what we establish as beauty, is, is in a symmetrical uh, face. So drawing ugly people, you, you can sort of make these errors of skinny chins and fat noses and stuff. Um, and I really like this dude. I think I gave him Wolverine hair at one point and I raced it because I, was, I thought, you know what, this is, yeah, right there. <laughs> it happened so quickly, but yeah, I thought, I can't be drawing Wolverine hair. It does not fit what I'm doing. So now I'm just chucking in an Uzi, um, which you won't probably be able to see. And I'm just, I think I get really carried away with the detail here. Like I put a gutter in there. I think it's called a gutter, a street gutter, or whatever it's called. Um, and then I, I put a, just put a, an idea of that's where I'm going to be putting windows, because I'll be using the perspective rule as well as doing this. 
So things are going to change. Uh, what else do I got going on here? Uh, do, 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 do. Sort of fixing up her face a bit. She doesn't really have much emotion on her face, but... Uh, I didn't want to stretch the emotion on her face too much because then there might be a sense of ugliness. If you got like a really angry girl, it, it, you, you can't have very pretty angry people, that's for sure. And I got this dude yelling here. Um, and I think I gave him... I think the coat I eventually gave him is actually a coat that I have. Which I thought was, I suppose, pretty Russian-like. <laughs> um, and here's an example of me just changing the sizes of things whilst working. And you know, the arms were too long for what I was drawing. So as I went, I sort of was sketching in the final image for him. And I think his leg doesn't make too much sense there. It might be a bit too small for his body, but it's not going to be noticeable in the final piece. And if it is, I'll fix it because, as I said, getting better at noticing my mistakes. Uh, checking in the gun. I'm, I was going to have like gunshots going everywhere, but I don't want this image to be too crazy. The focal image is supposed to be her and her kicking this guy. And if I just have all these gunshots blasting everywhere, it's just going to be a complete mess. So I think this image looks very full. But at the same time, I don't think it's too chaotic. I think it's just the right amount of chaos that I like um, for an image. What else is going on? I don't know what's going on. I think my computer froze there or something. Yeah, it's, it was getting a bit laggy. Uh, and then I was fixing her leg up a bit. I wasn't happy with the ideas. Yet. And I, I showed this to John Rector, my, my art buddy. And he was talking about how the her left arm is a bit of a midget arm. So I went back and fixed that later on. Anyway, that's it. Uh, the next uh, episode will be the inks for it. So thanks for watching. You can check out my work at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc. I've been Will Robson. Toodle bums. <laughs>